I would like to um, preface this video with the following notes. Uh, this is all captured content from an event that Namco sent us out to last week. To check out Dark Souls 3. We are playing here on Xbox One, 30 FPS. Uh, there's, we didn't have any specifics on PC FPS, so let's stop that discussion right now. But this is Xbox One, 30 FPS. Um, this is about 45-ish minutes of footage that I have edited down from three and a half hours of gameplay so please, please forgive me if there is, um, you know, if we're fading from point to point to point. I tried to keep NPC dialogue and encounters with um, exciting enemies as fluid as possible. But keep in mind, I had to squeeze everything into 45 minutes per mandate of, of Bandai Namco. So. That is what you're about to see. And the embargo is officially up. So, let's just hop right into it. Um, this may go fast. I may pause this, the uh, stream so that you guys, we can discuss a point for a bit. But here we go. It, we're going to kick off really quickly with the character creator. So here we go. We're starting a new game. I put that there because, well, normally the, the actual... Opening cinematic that was on YouTube plays during that point. But here we go. Here is the character creator uh, as we experienced it. So, uh, first thing you'll notice, it looks a little like Bloodborne, of course. Um, they've taken some design stuff from that. And the default character is a knight. And as I usually do, um, I went female. So here's a look at the classes. We got Knight, Mercenary, Warrior, Herald, Thief, Assassin, Sorcerer, Pyromancer, Cleric, Deprived. And I will scroll through them real quick. We got the Luxstat. Luxstat is is back from Demon Souls. Um, bigger vitality are there. No adaptability, no, uh, no agility stat, I'll tell you right off the bat. So GG. GG. And then, uh, you know, most of the, the classes are pretty straightforward. Myself and most everybody else went with the knight. Um, as far as stats, I'll stop on the ones that are, I'm sorry, as far as starting gifts, I'll stop on the ones that are uh, a little unusual or uh, the ones that we haven't seen before. Hidden Blessing, Pure Blessed Holy Water, Fully Restores FP. FP is going to be, I believe there's focus points. Uh, it's your magic, essentially. Um, Black Firebomb. Fire Gem is a material that will upgrade your weapons to fire. So, you know. Fire Path. Sovereignless Soul. Uh, don't know what this did. I'm not sure if anybody grabbed it, but it used to acquire many souls. Hopefully akin to something like a boss soul or just a large consumable soul. Rusted Gold Coin, a uh, chance to loot items for a short while. Young White Branch is an interesting item. Um, used to blend into an environment kind of like the uh, Silver Medallions from Dark Souls 2. Um, I don't think I actually got a chance to use one of these during the playtest. One important thing to note is that there will be lots of people uploading content from Dark Souls 3, and we are all had our own experiences, unique things, um, so I, I encourage you, if you're watching this, to go watch other people's content afterwards so you can see kind of their perspective because everybody will play differently and explore different ways and different things. Um, I can tell you for one thing, I, I am one of the only guys who explored a particular thing because I am, uh, I don't know, I, I had a desire to do so. So here's the, um, faces. Typical Dark Souls, they're kind of weird. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I just run through the things real quick that are available. 
If the characters are kind of bloodborne-y, they're a little skinny. They're a little, a little skinnier than uh, than we're used to, I guess. I checked the voice here, <laughs> just in case. I was very excited to get into the game, as you can see here. I'm kind of running through quickly. This is an interesting feature: belly hair for women. Oh, belly hair for women. Um. <laughs> Don't, um, body hair. So if you want, if you want your lady to have some some fur, you're good. You're good. Um, you got sliders. You got all the th all the stuff you would expect. You got the similar face option, which I messed with just briefly, and I was like, okay, good, good, that's there. I check tattoos. Yep, you can put giant ass tattoos on your face. And at that point, I was like, all right, let's finalize creation. And here is, oh, sorry, here is the interesting, interesting intro cutscene. I apologize if I skipped anything in the character creator. There are many details I had to squeeze in here. So we begin in the Cemetery of Ash. UI looks uh, pretty close to what it looked like in the network test. We got a mana bar. Did not know that already. I kind of run through these tutorial messages real quick. And don't worry, I open up the uh, the UI, the inventory, real quick. Right after killing this guy. So there you go. This is what the head the heads up display, the HUD looks like. Um, a lot of interesting things to look at here. Let's see. Uh, I will. I do run through it with the little help option here. Um, but let's, yeah, let me let it run through here. Explanation. So a lot of this is pretty standard. Tells you what kind of damage type it is. Uh, what your dis resistances are. But look at these. So we here we got stats here. Luck. Attribute governing item discovery. Ups bleeding and poison capabilities. Also governs resistance to curses. So what I've, uh, what they've done is they spread out resistance to different elements across stats. Luck is resistance to curses. Um, faith, uh, as it was in Dark Souls 2, boosts miracles and pyromancies. Um, pyromancy is affected by both faith and intelligence. And dark defense is calculated from this attribute. So, dark defense up. Yeah, if you if you were noticing, frost is a damage type in this. Um, so that's unusual from the past. We did see that during the network test, so... That may be information you already know. Intelligence, sorceries, and pyromancies, of course. That was uh, that was magic defense, if you missed it. Um, Dex uh, improves attack strength, reduces spell casting time, and reduces damage taken when falling. I don't remember if that's the case for Dark Souls 2. So strength has fire resistance, as well as... You know, strength and stuff, so. The fire resistance is kind of interesting. Vitality, poison resistance, max equip load, um, and some physical defense. Uh, endurance, stamina, and lightning and bleed resist. Attunement, attunement slots, and, oh, attunement also increases your mana, or your FP, your focus points. And Vigor has Frost Resist, as well as HP Up. This will all be uploaded to YouTube. And this is a, yeah, this is a video of, of my capture footage, so. Poise! We have very detailed poise numbers. 21.68. Uh, item discovery, oh, equip load, sorry. <clears throat> so I can tell you there is 
absolutely um, fat roll in this. If you look in the top right, you can see the equip load uh, stated again, as well as a calculated weight ratio. So you can immediately just see your percentage. I mean, Dark Souls 2 had that, so that's good. Uh, I believe fat roll in this is at 70%. 70% for fat roll. So I'm fast rolling at 61.5% weight. So very, uh, very interesting. Um, oh, item discovery, likelihood of finding items, attunement slots, that's for spells. That's, uh, that is that part of the UI. Here's a little tool belt, kind of like Bloodborne. You get this, um, I don't think you have a unique button that you can press to pull it up as its own element, but when you press start, you pull up this menu here, and you can just go down to your tool belt and use items from there. Now I've got this way of white circle it item we'll take a look at real quick. Uh, you guys might... Oh! <clears throat> Restore the link to other worlds. Here you go. Restore the connection to other worlds. Those who engage in unjust deeds when in contact with other worlds will lose their connection to them. Um, way of white circlets assume such sin as their own, but are found few and far between. Acting without honor will never be without risk. Um, I did not get a chance to use this. Uh, I'll make a note that we were allowed to do online play, but no online footage was allowed to be captured. We could not capture online footage just because I think they want to protect themselves because the, the features are not 100% fully done. So they didn't want us to show anything, any weird glitches that might have been happening. Um, we got a dark sign, we got Ess's flask. Um, I'll, I'll make a note, if any of you guys want to, this will be later uploaded to YouTube. So if you want to go back and read descriptions, uh, I'll look at a lot of them, but most of the common items we'll kind of skip over. Uh, so if there's any particular weapons or items that you see that you'd like to pause and read the description of, that will be available later. Here's our fire gem uh, that we chose as our starting gift. Gem of infused titanite found in rare cases inside demons. Hmm, demons. Used in infusion to create fire weapons. <clears throat> fire damage, but loose scaling. As usual. And yeah, this is a recording. That's why I keep pausing like this. Um, this is footage captured. So yes. I briefly look through the knight armor and stuff, and all the slots that we've got here, and I say, fuck it, let's play the video game. So here I quickly show off the sword art uh, feature, which is uh, for melee, melee heavy people. It uses mana. Basically, you two-hand a weapon, um, and you hold the L2 button, and you will either enter a stance, like you're doing here, or the L2 sometimes just triggers an ability. So here I'm holding L2, and then you can do, from that L2 stance, you can press R1 or R2. R1 will do kind of a weaker or lighter attack. Um, R2 will do a, a stronger attack. So that is the R1, and the R2 has a charge. So it, it, uh, it breaks that, that distance, that gap, closes that gap. <clears throat> of course I have to ch check out the fists. Um, still pairing with an L2. No, no, no battle art for the fists. But you'll see me using the battle art stuff a lot uh, as we go. There, I quickly used an Ashen Estus Flask, which is for restoring mana. So here's sword art in in action. Here's a backstab. Feels good, man. Uh, JPEG. The backstabs very much feel like Dark Souls 1. Uh, it's not the Dark Souls 2, like, I'm going to punch you, and then now I'm going to initiate the backstab thing. Um, oh yeah. Overall, the combat in this feels a little more like Dark Souls 1. Now, here's an interesting section. Uh, you come over here, and it says, Pull back! There's a message that says pull back. Well, obviously, we're not going to pull back, so. There's some knee or some waist high water that kind of slows your, your movement. And we might just see our first uh, kind of unique enemy here. 
<laughs> and this is all live gameplay, so you see I noticed this thing, and I'm like, well, I see the item over there, so let's see if we can just sneakily grab it. Oh, shit! Rolling attack there. Finish it with a battle art. So some of you guessed it. It's a giant crystal lizard here. And we'll get a detail on the item so you can get some lore. Here we go. Titanite altered by a soul. Reinforces soul transposed weapons to plus four. Um, I, we, I don't think we find out what soul transposed weapons necessarily are. Um, but presumably it's like the large ember or something like that. Promoting it to plus four. Uh, we'll find out more about that later, I guess. Uh, weapons forged by soul transposition can only be reinforced by titanite of the same kind. So taking that back, it might be some sort of alternate path you can upgrade a weapon to. In rare cases, crystal lizards devour souls, growing to monstrous proportion and leaving these great scales. So this is right in the tutorial area, so I was like, what? Okay, all right. Our speedrun's gonna immediately kill this guy? Is it that important? We'll find out. So this is kind of exiting out of the very initial tutorial area. Looks so pretty. So pretty. And here we reach our first bonfire. We get our first Xbox One G in Kindle. Note that sitting at the bonfire gives you this gesture, rest. So I give that a shot real quick. As you can imagine, it... Uh, forms the bonfire animation wherever you want to want to be. Here's continuation exploring the first area. I'm skipping a lot of minor enemies, so don't be concerned like, oh, there's not a lot of enemies in here. Uh, once again, I had to edit this down from 45 minutes, so yeah. Here's the Titanite Shard detail here. Um, Titanite Shards are fragments of legendary slabs. Kind of what we come to expect. Uh, and then quickly... We are going to... Uh,
we take down the first boss, Udex Gundir. And we get this coiled sword, which we pulled out of him. And we restore our ember. A lot of things here. A lot of things going on here. So, first of all, uh, that's kind of a tutorial boss. First boss you come across. He's not too tough. Very slow melee. Uh, easy to punish. Coiled sword. Sword missing from the shrine bonfire. Cannot be equipped as a weapon. Thrust into the shrine bonfire to restore its power and enable travel between bonfires. The sword is only bequeathed to chosen asters, judged by the EU Dex. EU Dex. Who awaits the arrival of Ash as a scabbard. So that is the, the sword they actually pull out of him, which is pretty badass. Um, and uh, as you saw, he becomes kind of corrupted. There's kind of a theme of that going on throughout, so it's kind of curious to see uh, how that plays out in the full game, but kind of, kind of Manus-esque. Here we're in the next area, and I grab a Homeward Bow. Uh, and you'll see how the warping works uh, in just a bit, so hang on on that. So here I'm trying to soul dupe, I mean, I'm trying to dupe Homeward Bones. Go figure, you can't. Haven't been able to since Dark Souls 1. Figured I'd give it a test. Here we uh, receive an ember, which is the humanity or effigy of this game. Um, so when you die in this game, you go down to something like 60% health. Uh, <laughs> don't judge me. Don't judge me. Um, and you use embers to restore that health. So it's very Demon Souls. Um, this is the equivalent of the, uh, the Demon Souls item. That I don't remember the name of. Because <laughs> it's been a while. No one can, can ever truly claim the embers that burn within a champion's bosom. Which is precisely what makes their yearning for warmth so keen. Um, gain the strength of flame and increased max HP until death. So, you die once. Yeah, Stone of Ephemeral Eyes. Thank you very much. You die once, your HP goes down. Right now, I am embered. As you can see in the top left, there's a... Lava, kind of fiery thing. Oh, here's a big reveal. Enjoy. And I do a little happy dance. My excited happy dance. Firelink Shrine. Uh oh. Now this is a big ass area. This is very much This is very much Nexus from Demon Souls. Uh the bonfire will deliver thee to Lothric. It's very Nexus, as you guys are picking up on. Um so there's thrones about This one has an ex an inscription that I run around and yeah. And yes, the music is so good. Holy King Lothric, last hope of his line. Welcome to the bonfire and new waifu. Fire. Enjoy. I am a fire king. I attend the lords have left their thrones, and must be delivered to them. I apologize for skipping some of that. There's a reason. To this end, I am at thy side. Very well. Then touch the darkness within me. Touch the darkness within me. Nourishment from these sovereignless souls. So, so, mm -hmm. there are lots of direct references in this game. Ashen one, to be unkindled is to be a vessel for souls. Sovereignless souls will become thy strength. I will show thee how, Ashen one. Bring me souls plucked from their vessels. Farewell, I the flame. And here we place the coiled sword that we retrieved from the first boss. And now we have a bonfire at Firelink Shrine. Happy dance. This allows you to warp. Um, kind of interestingly, though, it allows you to warp to new areas that you haven't been to. 
So here we can teleport to the next area, which is the High Wall of Lothric, or back to any bonfire that we came to before. The High Wall of Lothric is the area that was available during the network test. A pleasure to make thy acquaintance, Ashen One. I am but a humble handmaid of the shrine. Weapons, armor, trinkets, and spells. I've lots of little things to ease the burden of a weary traveler. And yes, I'm undead too. But not so charitable as to give my goods away. Ashen One, fetch souls and bring them to me. As is thy want, no? <laughs> this is the, uh, the merchant lady of Firelink Shrine, and she will sell you different things. Um, a lot of stuff right off the bat, in fact. One thing that I was particularly interested in is this tower key. 20,000 souls. Key to the decrepit tower behind Firelink Shrine, which is the bell tower. Ash. With ash, I'll fashion new wares. Is it not our sorry fate to sup on So if you bring her umbral ash, <laughs> it will increase her inventory, and she'll get more items. Um, and look at this guy. Well, a newcomer, I see. I am Andre. I serve at this shrine. As a humble smith, forging weapons. So yes, Andre is here. Um, I check out weapon uh, reinforcements there. Here's an op interesting option. Allotting Estus allows you to have more or less healing or mana potions. So I was not using any spells, so I went all, all Estus. Um, Granted, I was using the the new attacks, the battle arts that do require mana, but you know, I, I just decided I would stick with with Estus. We infuse our longsword to fire, fire longsword OP, and uh, we head out to the high wall of Lothric. Now there are more NPCs in Firelink Shrine. Um, there is a crestfallen warrior guy, as usual. Oh, and we might see a couple more later on. But here's the area, uh, the network test area. Um, I skipped through this area pretty quickly because, like I said, 45 minutes of footage. We've seen a lot of this before. If you haven't seen it, I've got videos of the network test on my YouTube that are unedited. Um, I highlight new items, new, like, kind of encounters. Um, you'll see here. We get binoculars. Binoculars confirmed. Platform door. Binoculars confirmed. As well as gravity causing my first death. Rip. Old footage. So here's a new. Here's a well, not new, but here's an item you might recognize: a Stora straight sword. Hmm. A lot of items were updated in this. And you'll see me just picking up a bunch of items to uh, investigate them before we move on. There's a swig ass parry repost. You'll see more combat certainly later um, as far as like smaller enemies and stuff. Here's a silver eagle kite shield. Uh, one thing, I guess, one reason I. Well. We'll go right into it. This guy is mean. And this fight is kind of... I I'll just say, keep an eye on my health during this fight, because it's a little brutal. Music of that. So you can use your battle arts when you're out of mana, but it lacks some gusto, per se. Still attacking chest. You, you, can't, you never can be too safe. That's been the win, though. So at this point, I'm at like, you know, 15% HP, trying to play it safe. I get knocked down at even lower HP. 
Uh, Clutch dodges here. Battle art ability to uh, clutch the win. Clutch that win. And here's me trying to make my way back to the shortcut that I know exists. Uh, and so at some point I just abandon it and say, I'm going to die if I stay here. So we make it here. I kind of fast forward a little bit to save some time. Trying to desperately make my way back to the bonfire. Um, at this point, I've hit, hit this shortcut, which is fortunate. But. As things. Oh shit, Man vs. Game Raid. What's up, guys? As you have come to expect, things in Dark Souls don't always go the way you want them to. And unfortunately. I'm wrecked. Here is a longbow. Which I do not have the stats to use at this moment. Um. <laughs> so I go back, I level enough decks to be able to equip the longbow, and let's check out its battle art. Holding L2 enters this stance here, which gives you a more powerful bow shot. And I test here, you can do this and aim at the same time. So you can hold L2 and then hold L1 to aim, and then R1 will shoot a power shot. That is the longbow in a nutshell. Here, uh, I knew that the boss, the dancer of the Frigid Valley, is in this room, so I wanted to rush here. But surprise, surprise! Not here anymore. Only this ah, woman. The wait has been long, unkindled one. I am Emma, High Priestess of Lothric Castle. Allow me to speak frankly. Sorry about that. You will not find the Lords of Cinder here. They have left, gone to their journey homes converging at the base of this castle. Head to the bottom of the high wall, forge on through the great gate, and raise this banner to proceed. Small Lothric banner. I take a quick look at this. It's under key items. Hold up outside the main castle gate to be greeted by an escort. We'll see what that does a bit later on. We get another interesting item from her, this though. This farewell gift is for you. It is the insignia of an old covenant. If you fear trespassers, dark spirits drawn by the embers, then etch this upon your heart, and the old concord will beckon noble blue sentinels. Blue sentinels! Spirits. The way of the blue is back. And we check out this item. It's basically it's a covenant item that you can equip. Summoning takes place automatically while this is equipped. So think the cat ring from, Deem uh, from Dark Souls 1, but that is basically how you enter or exit a covenant. Here's a red-eyed knight. Oh, I get the drop on. He has this pretty swanky weapon buff. A lot of Demon Souls influence going on here. We get a refined gem, which allows us to upgrade uh, weapons to the refined path, which is our equivalent of quality, strength and dexterity ex uh, scaling effectiveness. Next, we pick up a weapon some of you might like. Might like doing my happy dance again as we pick up the Lucerne. Check out the move set of that real quick. This is the L2. This is the battle art. So you'll see it uses mana every time I do this special attack. 
But look at that stamina usage, man. You can spam this spin attack so much. Two-handed move set here. So, uh, again, there are charged up attacks, just like Bloodborne. Here's a charge R2. A little bit longer wind up. Pretty much the same attack animation, but slower. And here we meet an interesting friend. So that new uh, status affliction right there, that is Frostbite. Um, Frostbite was in the network test. I believe when that bar hits full, it drains your stamina and slows your character. And, and prevents uh, your stamina regen from being as effective. I don't know what this attack was, but I did not want to see. Unfortunately, for the uh, display purposes here, a lot of this boss was not visible because I just like, kill it, kill it with fire. So I apologize if you didn't get a good uh, read on everything the boss is capable of, but you know, you gotta you gotta try hard, right? You gotta try hard. So we get a soul here. Um, kind of some interesting notes, real quick. Vort served. I'm sorry. It said Vort served as. Uh, go back real quick. That was the wrong screen here. Vort served as an outrider knight, never far from the fleeting dancer. So that's really interesting because. Um, the Fleeting Dancer in the network test was in that room, just up up the stairs. You go out of this area, you go up a big staircase, and then there's that door where we now found that NPC. Um, so, interesting to note that he teleports in from, like, a portal in the same way that the Dancer does, um, and that they are, uh, never far from each other. So, we'll see how that turns out. So ahead here, there's a there's a big cliff here over the cliff, and hold up the banner. Before I do that, I return to Lothric to check out some things. Here, I was kind of interested in how this uh, bow would do against this dragon. Um, let me do a damage test. I'm like, oh, 24. Screw that. That's not any good damage. Let's keep going. Wait. What's going- HOLY SHIT! <laughs> so, this dragon is very... He's very aware of his surroundings. So, no Drake Sword Cheese there. Here we return with a, a new key that we found. We find a new ah. NPC. You're no jailer, are you? No, no, you're from far away. And judging by the bell... You must be some of that unkindled ash. Remarkable. If that's true, then I have a favor to ask. 
Below the high wall is a musty little town, not the home of any lord, just a, a very old settlement of undead. An old woman, Loretta, lives there. Please, give her this ring. Yes, yeah, just to give you, give Loretta a blue tearstone ring, and then promptly teleports out. Here we return, and we witness a strangely uh, memorable cutscene. Again, the direct references are strong in this game. <laughs> so the, uh, the gargoyles take us to the undead settlement, which is the next area that we're exploring in this playthrough. This is a cool little scripted event uh, that just one of those things that kind of adds to the world and the environment. These guys are obviously not hostile, but there's an NPC that unleashes these dogs. It just wreck all of these seemingly, like, non-hostile civilian type things. Dogs confirmed. guy who opened the gate now here are those uh those pilgrims you see in the uh opening cinematic trailer which is available to watch on youtube <laughs> please grant me death undo my shackles <laughs> oh oh then it's true i really like the this guy's voice of ash as i live and breathe to be in your presence is a great honor. I am Yol of Londor, a pilgrim as you can see, only somehow I failed to die as was ordained. Well, perhaps my calling lies elsewhere. Say, Champion of Ash, how does the idea of taking me into your service strike you? I was once a sorcerer. Surely I can be of use. Oh, I am honored, truly. I should be dead, yet you have granted me purpose anew. I, Yol of Londor, do solemnly swear myself to you. Yol of Londor. And he teleports away just like the imprisoned guy. Uh, what I believe this is, I believe they're returning to Firelink Shrine. I did not confirm this later. Um, so we'll just have to see in the future, or see if somebody else confirmed that. Small leather shield. Nipple shield hype. Box physics hype. This is a cool little, uh... Some little world building lore here. This guy is turned into a tree. Dead. Now this area is very Bloodborne-esque in the sense that there are a lot of humanoid enemies. This guy's a son of a bitch. But there's, there were, uh, as I was wa standing over that little balcony, there's a bunch of NPCs huddled around a fire. These guys seemingly have infinite stamina. But, uh... Oh, you guys are gonna like this. So we get the Cestus. The Cestus, which I'm very excited about. Again. <clears throat> Let's check out the moveset here. So here is the, uh, battle art. 
I... Not even sure what that does. It might be damage, it might be defense. Here is L1 spamming. So this is, uh, the way it's working is, uh, you equip a weapon and if you can dual wield it, all you need is one copy of the weapon. When you press Y to two hands, you immediately go into dual wield mode. And that HP check, there's rats, go figure. Blood bite ring acquired off the rats. And here we're invaded by Holy Knight. Uh, you might recognize Holy Knight from Allerheim in the Dark Souls 2 DLC. This guy is ruthless. This NPC is no joke. So that, uh, if you, if you use a battle art and you break someone's guard with it, you can follow up with a parry. Kind of like Guard Break in Dark Souls 2. But this guy pulls off a couple more swag moves, in addition to getting his little friend aggro here. And yes, purple. Purple Invader. So check this out. I try to finish him off right here. Right as he's healing. Nope. Get fucking parried. Nasty, nasty NPC. But I managed to take him out. Dark Spirit destroyed. Holy Knight Hodrick. We, we earn a vertebra shackle here. Now this is interesting. Special bone collected by members of the Covenant of Mound Makers, discovered in the corpses of their victims. Only one such bone is found in the vertebrae, and the Mound Makers believe it to be a shackle of the gods. In their minds, each victim is another connection in addition to the family. So, it's possible you earn these from any sort of uh, multiplayer kill, or possibly only hosted, uh, I'm sorry, uh, local NPC invasions, but... This is the only NPC that I retrieved one of these off of. Um, yeah, the AI is great. It's wonderful. It's like Bloodborne where they really step it up. And they start to feel like actual players. Here we get the whip. That is the battle art right there. Very whip spammy. I don't even know where the hitboxes are there. Like, who knows? Here's a new enemy type. Uh, this is kind of like a... an easier mimic in the sense that they seem to place a bunch of these around. Some of them are actually enemies. Some of them are not. Um, like, some of them is just full of corpses. And so you're like, what the heck, man? Which one's real, which one's not? Kind of, yeah, kind of uh, minces cagey. Here we drop down into the secret room where we earn... Warrior of Sunlight badge. Covenant Warrior of Sunlight acquired. Um, just like the Way of the Blue item. I'll pause real quick. Just like the Way of the Blue item, you can equip that as your Covenant item and champion the Sunlight the sunlight cause. Um, what I did just here, um, this isn't all that fascinating, but there's a, there's a cauldron right here that you walk up to, you interact with, and it's filled with Estus. And uh, it doesn't replenish your Estus, but it does fully heal you. Um, in case you're like out of Estus and you get to this point. So, Estus soup! Soup hype! Delicious. Delicious. You may have seen this area in various gameplay trailers, but here we traverse it myself. I kind of knew what to expect, but still wasn't sure, so. Wanted to kind of check it out myself. Sure enough, those things hurt. I was trying to figure out where exactly they're coming from. Um, 
And I start bailing. I start bailing. Pick up an ember. Young White Branch is that item, that starting gift that is like the uh, medallions. Here's something some of you might like. Great Scythe! Pick out the moveset here. Now! Here's Fat Roll. Funk. That, that's, a, that's a slower roll there. Uh, the Great Scythe took us over that threshold. And there's the L2 attack. Whoop. Whoop. Pretty cool. Uh, one moment here. Let me point out that this entire time, if you remember, I visited this store and was very interested in this 20,000 key item. I've been stashing up my souls all the way to this point to get the 20,000 souls to buy this key. I'm not sure if anybody else did this. So this might be unique content, Kappa, but we'll see. Um, I, d I did share this with some other people, but I wanted to see what this key led to. So let's go. I go explore a bit around Firelink. Um, and I happen to run into this guy who has carrying a weapon you might recognize. Visually, this this looks very much like the Shikage from Bloodborne, but in fact, it is the Uchi Katana, and we acquire also Master's Attire off of it. Here we equip it and take a look. I'm fat rolling, but holding L2 puts you in this stance. R2 is a parry. R2 is a parry. R1 is this charge forward slash that we we're familiar with, but R2 is actually a parry. And then we check out the Master's Attire. I like this little lore bit here. Um, men are fond of weaving tales to explain the raggedness of their garb. In this quote here, My sixth sense warned me of danger, and I danced between flurries of blades, unscathed. But alas, my clothes went to tatters. Um, so it's a, light, it's a light armor. Did not see if it affected any stats or anything like that. Um, but just figured I'd share that with you. Here I find the tower. We use the tower key. And I'm expecting, you know, well shit. Here we're gonna do gargoyles fight, right? Because it said bell tower. It said bell tower. We get this long lead up, this long forgive the fast forwarding. I walk in here, there's a lift that takes us all the way up. Keep in mind, this is early, so stuff might change. Maybe there will be something else here later, but what we encounter here is a Firekeeper soul. So, let's take a read. Soul of a Firekeeper who is said to have returned from the Abyss. This Firekeeper preserves the bonfire and serves its champion. She is said to have soothed and accepted the Dark Sigil, which has tainted her soul. This has uh, lower implications here. And yet, her soul will one day embed itself in the bosom of another Firekeeper. At 20k. 20k for this. So. Kind of interesting. We do take this back. It's a key item. You cannot use it in this game. Welcome but we home, take this Ashen, speak that. to the Firekeeper at Firelink. And here you go. Ashen One, this is much like what lies within me. Then let it find its own place. Within my bosom. Bosom. She will understand. We are both fire keepers after all. The fire keeper, keeper, fire keeper. The fire keeper is now able to heal the dark sigil. Now I did not experience the dark sigil at all in my gameplay, so I don't know what that is. We'll just have to wait and find out. Here's me exploring past the area with all of the uh, javelins, the giant javelins that are flying at you. And you might recognize this area as well from gameplay trailer footage. There's some uh, NPCs lying around. As you approach, they become aggroed, and we encounter the curse rotted great wood.
This uh, first part of the fight is very, very ad heavy. Uh, meaning they keep spawning humanoid NPCs. Like, they'll jump out of these windows and there's just no stopping them while you're dealing with this guy. I started to get him to smash his own buddies because that, that kind of worked. Um, but basically hit it in the ball sack <laughs> or get smacked while you're trying to. This boss is very slow, but very hard hitting. And so it's one of those that you really don't want to mess up. Because if you do, you're going to be wasting Estus left and right. And having problems. So here I kind of YOLO. And I managed to, right before he slams down, pop his sack. Um, at this point during the fight, he will uh, initiate his butt slam and take you down this floor. And this is where the gameplay trailer stopped before. Um, but I find I immediately find some more sacks to hit. Begin wailing on him. So, this is interesting. During the fight, I was trying to figure out what the hell is going on with this thing. I loot a Homeward Bone, I loot a War God Wooden Shield, and then I pray at this altar where we can offer our Vertebra Shackle that we obtained off of the NPC Invader earlier. <laughs> While this giant tree is like, freaking out. And yes, it has a giant arm sticking out of it now. Hit it in the sacks! So this is fast forwarded. This boss actually killed me several times. It was a bit slow going until I figured it out and had a good time. But I managed to slay him here. And we obtained from this guy the soul of the rotted great wood and transposing kiln. We're going to see what that does in just a second. Achievement unlocked. Here's the uh, soul. It reads, Ever since its, uh, its establishment, all manner of curses have managed to seep into the undead settlement. The worst of them were sealed away inside a spirit tree, but eventually the curses took their toll. So, things to note here. It says, One of the twisted souls steeped in strength. They mentioned twisted souls up ahead, so it seems like that might be something like a great one, sort of. Twisted Soul is its own category. And here, uh, an old transposing kiln from Corland, crafted with stitched crystal lizard hide. This kiln can transpose Twisted Souls to craft special items with their concentrated essence, deemed forbidden by those unable to make proper use of it. So we're going to give this to Ludleth, Lord of Cinder, who we actually have not met yet, because I didn't see him until much later. Windows Media Player, hell yeah. So let's take this back, and on the way back, I find this NPC who is rather interesting. Mm. I, I think I accidentally body. skipped some of his dialogue here. And fast on the trail of the Lord's absconded. Then these red eyes are for you. Oh, maybe not. This guy looks very bloodborne, as you can see. Use them to pillage enemies and briefly heighten your strength for your duty. Here is L uh, Ludleth. All that and kindled. And a seeker of lords. I am that little caller. Look not in bewilderment, as I say. I linked the fire long ago, becoming the lord of cinder. One neat little uh, thing I picked up on is, well, you can see he has no legs. And where his legs would be, the that tapestry is like burned and charred, which is pretty, pretty interesting looking. Um, if substantiation be thy want, set thine eyes upon my child cause. This sad cadaver, no need to be coy. Have a closer look. 
So we give him the transposing kiln. Oh, belike it is a transposing kiln in thy possession. Seen better days, but methinks it shall suffice. Now, bring to me a twisted soul. Twisted soul. So we bring him the soul of the rotten great wood, and we get a couple of items. So two of them are grayed out. Um, two of those items are uh, crafted from uh, Bort of the. I'm sorry, Vort of the Boreal Valley or Boreal Tundra, the first um, boss in the. Sorry, not the first boss. The second boss who we fought in the uh, High Wall of Lothric. So here is Hollow Slayer uh, Greatsword. It's a Dex Greatsword. I end up choosing that, but let's look at the items. Oh, our store's spear. Uh, there's a spear crafted from the Greatsword. This ring is interesting. Recovers HP with successive attacks. So if we had kept... <laughs> Bort, Bort, Bort. If we had kept uh, Vort of the Boreal Valley soul... We could have acquired Pontiff's left eye. I popped his soul in order to gain the 20k so we could access the tower. Um, but yeah, this is potentially like Rally from Bloodborne. We'll see. I unfortunately did not get a chance to use this. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> yes. And then Vort's a great hammer. You can, you can grab his hammer, which is a full strength weapon um, with... Descaling to start, anyways. Uh, one thing to note up there underneath Great Hammer, it says Strike, Perseverance. Uh, that is the battle art type that the weapon has. Um, and that icon, that sword icon, uh, is, is also of note. Because if that icon is on a shield, then instead of parrying with the shield, you will actually use the battle art instead of whatever is in your main hand. So that means for heavier shields um, that, you know, you, you are not able to parry with, instead of parrying, when you hold L2, it immediately two-hands your weapon and goes into that battle art stance. And from there, you can, uh, you can initiate those attacks. Video is almost over, sadly. Here's the great sword. It's not a heavy great sword, so it's not like an ultra great sword move set. I ended up using a raw broadsword in this playthrough. But here's a new NPC that we meet up. You all you faceless undead, behaving as if you deserve respect. No matter. Heed my words. If you've any sense, you'll go find a coffin to huddle up inside. You here, in this land of hollows. You're like a frail maiden on the front lines. If, like the others, you're fool enough to play the champion, then go on ahead. Trapes right past the abandoned church. You'll face death. And it won't be pretty. This guy's kind of a douchebag. Enough death to leave you broken. Time after time. <laughs> And unfortunately, this is going to be coming to the close of our video, but not before one more very interesting throwback. I was absorbed in thought. I am Siegvert of Katarina. Siegvert. To be honest, I'm in a bit of a pickle. Have you ever walked near a white birch only to be struck by a great arrow? Well, if I'm not mistaken, they come from this tower. Whoever it is, I'm sure I can talk some sense into them. But I have to find a way up. And that's just the trouble. This lift only goes down, you see, and... Uh, well, that doesn't get me anywhere. Hmm. 
And heading down this elevator was unfortunately the limit to our gameplay. But that's Ark Souls 3. And that is what I have had for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Now! Um... Before I go any further here, let me, let me tell you guys that... Uh, I, I want to remind you that there were several people at this event um, who will have, you know, different perspectives, different footage of this gameplay. For example, that elevator, um, it goes down, and when it goes down, there's a second elevator on top that you can take up. And you can find the giant who's throwing those javelins while you try to traverse that area, and... There's quite a bit of content right there that I, I did not have time to find. Um, people like Peeve Peeverson. Uh, Mandrus Game found that and uh, also some sort of fire demon. Um, uh, Terra Mantis, Vatividia, um, Ouroboro, you know, all these guys are going to have this content um, from their perspective published on their channel. I really adv advise you guys to take, it, uh, take a look at their stuff. If you liked this, they will see it in a whole different light. They'll show you off, you know, different weapons. I will show off the things that I'm interested in while they will show off the things that they're interested in. So, um, be sure to check that kind of stuff out. Um, they're available on YouTube, on Twitch. This video is going to be uploaded to YouTube.